Hi, this is Jeff Spence, your Math 135 instructor, and this is our video lecture over uh, section 3.5 entitled Five Number Summary and Box Plots. So the five number summary is going to be our last bit of uh, statistics that we're going to come up with for a quantitative data set. Remember before we've come up with the mean, median, mode, range, standard deviation, and variance. Um, and we have measures of position like z-scores and percentiles. We're also going to come up with the five number summary, which is our last bit of statistics from a quantitative data set. Remember though that we found that five number summary from the bottom of our one var stat list. So the one var stat will give us this number summary directly. The main thing is that we're going to use this number five number summary to create box plots. And so that's mainly what this uh, section is about. So the five number summary, once again, is, is on the bottom of our one bar stat list. It's the minimum, Q1, the first quartile, the median, third quartile, and the maximum. This is an example data set of 12 numbers showing the five number summary below it, the minimum of 30, the maximum of 94, and the quartiles of 59, 71.5, and 83 in the middle. Remember, the median is the second quartile or the 50th percentile. So, we need to learn how to construct a box plot, which is basically a, represent, uh, a graph of the five number summary. Easy box plots, box plots are basically uh, graphs that only have the five number summary in them, going from the min to the max. So we need to be able to show one by hand. I'm going to go, I'll come back to these steps, but let me just show you what one is going to look like. So if you look at this, the final product here, let me just get all the way to the final product. Here is our box plot, sometimes called a box and whisker plot because you have the box on the inside and the whiskers running to the, to the min and to the max in this case. Every time you draw a box plot, the left edge of the box will always be Q1. So notice how Q1 is 59, it's just below 60 there. The line going in the middle of the box is always going to be the median, so that's just above 71 there. And the right edge of the box is always going to be Q3, which is 83 here, so that's a, you know, a, a little bit above 80. We can see also that the min is 30, so the whisker on the left goes all the way to 30, and the whisker on the right goes all the way to 94. Now this might seem easy to do, but when we have outliers in our data set, box plots become pretty, uh, uh, you have to be very careful with how you're going to draw the whisker, and it becomes much harder uh, and more complicated to do, but one thing's for sure: every box plot, no matter which, no matter if the data set has outliers or not, the left edge of the box will be Q1, the line through the middle of the box will be the median, and the right edge of the box will be Q3. It's just a matter of where these whiskers go to. So let me go back to the instructions, and here are some steps that they're going to have us follow. I will also have another couple videos where on my iPad I use this uh, this thing that I can draw on where I actually am going to draw some box plots as well. And uh, I have extra videos going through these steps. Now one thing I just want to mention is that step two for me on there, or step two, their step two, will be my step one. But it's not too important. Uh, we'll go through it many times and we'll get up the number line and do the fences anyway. So their first step is to do compute the fences. Remember, we want to determine if the data set has any outliers. We'll know if we have any outliers if we have a data value below the lower fence or any data values above the upper fence. So you compute those and then you determine if you have any outliers. So once we have the upper fence and the lower fence, you can draw a horizontal number line uh, like we saw in the previous example that encompasses the range of the data including the fences. So let me go to that real quick. They determine the fences here to be 23. To the lower fence is 23 and the upper fence is 119. So notice that their number line basically goes from 20 to 120. So everything will be covered here. And then going back, after that, you want to temporarily indicate the fences with brackets so that you can say anything beyond this bracket is going to be an outlier. Anything not is not, is not an outlier. So they've done that here with these brackets at the fences. So next, 
is to draw the box, and I wonder if they actually put that, they didn't um, say that, but you have to draw the box, and the left edge of the box is always Q1, the line goes through the middle as the median, and the right edge of the box is Q3. So they kind of left that step out because it's so obvious, I guess, to them. But that's why I'm here telling you that that will always happen. After that, once you have the box and the fences up like we do here, then you draw the whiskers. And when you have no outliers, <coughs> the whiskers are very easy to do. The left whisker would just go to the minimum. As you can see here, it goes to 30. And the right whisker goes to the maximum, which you can see is 94. They remove the brackets at the end. You could leave them in if you want. Um, but this basically shows, this graph basically shows the five number summary from left to right. The minimum at 30, the Q1 at about 59, Q2 or the median at about 71, Q3 at about 83, and the maximum at about 94. So it's a quick representation of the five number summary. However, we will have some data sets that are skewed and have outliers. So going back to this one real quick, this one is basically bell-shaped. The box is pretty symmetric. This whisker is a tad bit longer than this one, but not, not significant enough to say that there's a skewedness in this data that we would generally call this box plot bell-shaped. But notice these box plots when we have a right skewed data like this histogram. Notice how the whisker on the right is stretched out way, way, way to the right compared to the left whisker, and the right end of the box is a little bit more stretched out than the left end. In this box plot, we also have two outliers. The, you can denote them with a star <coughs> or a dot or an asterisk or a square like they're doing. This data set has two outliers on the right. So what they, must, what they did was they came up with their fences and they had two values that were greater than the upper fence. So they put squares there. Then what they did was they drew this whisker out to the next largest data value that was not an outlier that was still inside the fence. Now, if you didn't understand that, I'm going to do a couple videos where I construct box plots that have outliers and go over that, that uh, complicated step right there of how far the whisker goes out. It doesn't go out to the fence. It goes out to a data value. This bottom box plot is just the mirror image of the other one. We have a left skewed data set. These are exam scores. Notice how the left um, whisker runs way further out than the right one, and the left end of the box is stretched out a little bit more, so that tells you that this is left skewed. So, please watch the other videos that I, where I'll create box plots. I'll go through these steps, and I'll, you can see each step again. I'll have one where we, I'll, I'll have some examples where we have outliers in them, and well, uh, outliers in the box plot as well. That's what makes this process. The most complicated, if you don't have outliers though, then a box plot is really easy. It goes from min, Q1, median, Q3, and max. Watch those videos on me constructing box plots, and we'll see you next time.